It is now less than one day away from Goros World coming to Dawnlinks, of course, bringing Fusion Summoning to Rush Duels. We've got Yumu, Yulius, Yuhi being unlockable. We've got Yuo coming later in the week. Two mini boxes, two structures, decks, potentially a speed door selection box as well. Maybe some other things, cool things happening here and there. Promo cards, bundles, etc. It is going to be a very big week for Duel Links. But today was a stream featuring Yudis' voice actor playing Rush Duels and Duel Links. And there was a lot of information revealed, including the full list of the two structure decks and partially the two mini boxes. So first of all, is the Hero Structure deck now. This one is pretty straightforward, right? We kind of assume this would be what it is. It is very, very good. There's no cards locked for heroes behind the mini box, right? Thank you, Konami, for doing that. That's really, really big for accessibility. Now, remember, you're getting one for free by the campaign, one's 500 gems, and one is $4. So for $4, you've got a full rush tool deck. That's pretty good. Now, reprint-wise, you've got Piercing Samurai, which you can put it on a Flaming Man going very early on. That is really big. Hammer Crush is kind of not super played anymore, but isn't that bad for a removal spell given that the other one we have is behind a box. So that is, uh, you know, overall for a structure wise, it's not too bad at all. Then the next one is Transam Universe. Now, this one is a little more exciting because we're getting Grey Storm Reverie. This is a new pseudo boss for galaxies. 25 attack is really, really good. You send another card from your field to Grey Universe, it could be a spell card or a monster card. Off this card by 500, but if there's no backer on the field, this card can attack twice on monsters, meaning it's kind of like a Dragius with more attack points, but can't attack directly when it does that. So th this is really, really cool. Of course, we get Lanark as well. The, the name still sucks, but this is going to be a thrill in the deck. It is your best normal summoning galaxies. We've then got Cosmo Predictor. Now, this one is all about summoning your Grace from Reverie, because during the turn it's summoned when there's no cards on the field, you can add one level of galaxy from a grave to your hand. Then if you would summon your Grace from Reverie, this card counts two tributes. So you play this, add a Reverie from your grave back to your hand, then you summon him out. That's pretty straightforward, right? Pretty straightforward. Also, is Star Trial Leo. Now, this does kind of clash with this in that you can't play both these effects in the same turn, but it does work to kind of synergize with it. So if there's another monster on the field, you turn your summoner's card, you mill three. All the galaxies stay in the graveyard, the rest go back to your deck. Now, if you were to say mill this, then next turn, you summon this, bring it back out. Or if you were Galactic Oblivion, and you've got Secret Order in your hand, you play that, bring it back out. This card will see play, probably a two of, I'd imagine, maybe it's a three of. You know, attack stat, not great. It is just going to be kind of summoned, effect activated, then sacked off. But it's not too bad at all, right? Then a reprint of Rifle Magic. Okay, it's not great. Um, other new card wise, we've got a better version of Kona Sparks for Galaxies. That's great. But beyond that, it is really going to be these four as the main cards you're going to want to pick up. There is one free copper structure deck, one with gems, one paid, very cheap. Then we've got the Sevens Fusion Box. Now, again, we are missing some normals as well as some reprints, but we've got the main shebang here, and it is looking really, really good. So, of course, the main four cards, we kind of expect all this, right? Cyber and Dragon is the box you are. Makes sense. Materan or Shura Star is US Ace. He is coming later in the week. This could be really, really impactful for the day one metagame, right? Because either it's a face-down card pop, which is, you know, not too bad at all, right? Either set body or back row. Or you choose a side beat control and he gains attack equal to combine attack points of all warriors your opponent controls. Now, what deck is warriors that's really popular that's getting a structure deck on day one? It's heroes, so this will see play a lot, right? Meaning that this card is going to be live a lot. It just depends on how easily you can see the fusion summon, because remember, Russian fusions, they require specific materials, and also they've got to be on the field, meaning that for things like your Seven's Paladin and your Dragon Star, you know, it's kind of scary having a card that can attack twice and have piercing damage, but to summon it, you've got to summon a Dragius and the Dragon, which means you can interrupt them. You can trap hole them, you can pop them on your turn, for example. They aren't indefeatable and they are preventable, which is the big thing with fusions in Rushdall. Speaking of fusions, we've got a Cyber Twin Dragon. I am shocked at this one because I was hoping we'd get a Cyber Rush Dragon, but we're not, which is kind of disappointing. But this card is probably better than it in the most part, right? This will be the boss you summon most often. It is a double attacker. No strings attached. Um, this is just a, a really, really good card. You know, just, just in general, everyone knows it, right? Speed players know it. And if you do want to get speed players into playing Rush Duel, you do it by giving them cards they know 
and Heroes, they know. Cyber Dragons, they know. Then React was a box SR. This card is, in, in, is incredible, right? It's coming two weeks before the debut, which is great. It is a pot of greed and a recursion for Incarnation of Graveyard and becomes material for your Materions. It's a, it's a hard three of it. it just, it's, it's so, so good. Then Cyber Search Dragon is probably okay as a one of, maybe a two of a maximum, probably a one of. Um, it is a monarch like in that you can sign it by tributing a Cyber Dragon, which is pretty good, right? Some Proto Cyber Dragon becomes Cyber Dragon. Sack it off for this. That's a 1 tribute 24. It's not awful. And in the turn you summon this card, return a card from your hand back to the top of the deck, summon a Cyber Dragon, only the OG from the graveyard to your field. You've got two big bodies. Now the downside is this isn't treated as a Cyber Dragon, meaning that you can't use this to summon a Cyber End Dragon or Cyber Twin Dragon. Meaning you are kind of left with some weaker bodies on your field, but the skill does give you a bit of a buff. So we'll see how that all kind of works together on day one. Then is the Ether cards, right? Fast Striker. You've got your, uh, your Finder and your Seeker. These are probably the worst kind of cards in the SR lineup. They might see plain heroes. We'll have to kind of wait and see. But I think people are not super excited for these ones. We've got Virtual Star as well, which uh, could be very interesting because it is a Book of Moon either way, right? Going from attack to defense, defensive attack. Or it is popping dragons your opponent controls. Now, the big thing is you can't pop this. This is a high dragon, not a dragon, but you can pop the materials if they're around. So, your opponent is probably going to summon Dragius, keep it around for a turn, then summon this, right? You, it's very unlikely they summon this in one turn. So if you can see your Vitra Star, a one pop for including itself, it's just a Dragius gone. That's a pretty solid trade for summoning a 28 body that then your opponent's going to kind of struggle to deal with. Assume they haven't got another Dragius they can summon, or away into this. Then we've got a Limit 3 Necromander third. Now, this might not seem all that great, but it is a free summon of level 3 normal in your graveyard. Now, what could that be? That could be Imaginary Actor, right? It could be Bustinatrix or Avion, Red Elemental Heroes. So I'm kind of hoping this card does see play because it's really cool. Um, your opponent has 7 monsters on the field, which is, that's fine, right? Level 7 higher. That's most like turn 2s in Rush Duel. So this is going to be live most of the time. Pretty cool card. Then we've got the Star Dragon. Now, this is a level 725 boss. Good stat line. Sent to the graveyard. It loses 500 attack points, so it becomes 2,000, not great, but then you can make one monster opponent controls, lose 1,000 in the, the turn. Which means that you can now beat over the Dragon Star F, the Seven's Paladin, the Ashura Star, the Cyber Twin, right? All the fusions in Rush Duel Day 1 aside from Cyber and Dragon can be beaten over by this, which is a really nice little trade. And then of course becomes 25 on your opponent's turn for them to deal with. So I don't think this saw much play in the OCG, but in Duel Links, I can kind of see it. I can kind of see it. And then of course we've got the Star Reset to the best one already. Probably sees play in Heroes potentially, but more so in the Materions. That's kind of the place it's going to be. Um, in terms of rares, what's kind of important, we've got the Card Restoration. Now, this could be kind of funny in that when your opponent plays an attack, you have five cards in your hand. Then if there are monsters among them, you gain life points equals the number you drew. So, you know, potentially you've got up to five, right? So gaining a thousand at maximum is, you know, not too bad but the big thing is that you're drawing to five and on your turn you're drawing one whereas if you were to have a lesser hand anyway right you'd be drawing to five in your turn so in some cases this could be much better than just doing a normal draw so in some decks this might work out fine it is a it is a cool card I, you know maybe i'm overhyping it but uh i think there are going to be some games where it's card obviously play and it'll win them the game because that one extra card is going to be so so important then for limit one, we've got Dragon's Fortitude, which is a really cool version of the barrier for dragons that's just way better. It can be recycled, I believe, with another card we're getting, which is going to be Fortitude Dragon, that searches card from the graveyard back to your hand. But uh, I think as a one-off in the deck for dragons, it's probably a decent inclusion, probably a decent inclusion. And finally, is Galactica Go Rush, the final box. This one is the surprising one because there are no limit threes. And I really thought, I think a lot of people really thought that Secret Order here would be limit 3. Or it would be limited in some way in terms of how we get it, right? Hard limit 1 copy via level up, right? It could have been that. But no, we've got 3 copies of this card. Which um could be really, really interesting. You've got Galactic Oblivion as a really good target. You've got your, uh, your Sheep Girl Meek Chan as well that could be played. Or Dark Magician you can technically play this. Keep recurring down magician. Um, so that might be something we try out. 
because that seems kind of fun. Now, in terms of other Watch Air cards, right, you've got your Bluetooth Burst Dragon and your Joint Tech Rex. Now, this not being limit three is really, really weird because, of course, you can still play this along with Innovator, right? You just don't use the skill. So, that could be really, really powerful given its back removal on Lex and its recursion as well. Now, I know in the the Joint Tech isn't exactly like the best deck in the world, but in terms of a generic ish card, this isn't bad at all. Right, this is really good. So fingers crossed, some cool decks and comfort. Now, super rare card wise, what do we have? Well, we've got Hacking Dragon, which I believe is a Yumu card. This is not that great. It summons a dragon from your hand to points field, right? So you could summon a really weak body, sure. Then you bounce and your lower your opponent controls back to the hand. Now, that's fine, but against a fusion deck, it does nothing. Against maximum decks, it kind of does nothing. Now, yes, it could put back a Dragius or a Seven's Road that could kind of stumble these cards from coming out, right? That could be a play you do. And in that sense, it's fine. For a 2 Trooper 23, I think I'd prefer going into something like the uh, the Star Dragon, right? And just kind of guaranteeing you've got that clear. Then Jewel Kotals is a card that I use quite a lot in the Japanese Go Rush Switch game that can attack twice, becomes 21. It can't attack directly. This is not awful, right? It's not awful for just kind of getting in there and dealing with your opponent's monsters on turn one. Then we've got Tosseratops, which we've talked about, of course, when the skill was leaked. Um, the skill kind of swaps them around, so it becomes 2500 body. Okay, sure. Eve of the Big March. Now, this is a support card for your, uh, your Mig Chan, right? In the you reveal a 700 beast in your hand, which is going to, of course, be Mig Chan. You mill three, then summon up two of them, a level full of beast warriors, face down. And then, of course, you contribute them off to summon into Mig Chan. That is the most simple combo you've got under the sun. Now, it would be cool. If we were getting the Legend Beast card, right, the um, the Behemoth, that'd be kind of neat if we were getting that, but at the moment we aren't. Then we've got the Crusher Drone, now this is a Yuhi card. Um, I don't think this is all that great. Now, it does mill you two cards, and so it does kind of work with Joint Tech Rex, right, getting bodies in the graveyard. That's neat, but this becomes 16, and that's not very good, especially if you're on 1200 tap points on your opponent's turn. Is not amazing unless, of course, you summon this, you mill two, sack it off for of this, then it's fine. Then we've got Erokai Plano, which if there's a beast normal you control, you can set one of two cards from graveyard onto your field. Then, if there's a Meek Chan in the field, you gain some life. Um, it does depend on how much of the deck we get, because I believe there are more cards than we know of here, and so it could be a fun little strategy, but I don't think it's going to be anything all that amazing, at least on day one. Then we've got Strange Traveler. If there's a galaxy normal on your field, send top card deck to graveyard. To make one face monster your opponent controls lose 500. Uh, it's okay. It's fine-ish. Yeah, that's my kind of thought on that one. Uh, meteor charge is usable by the skill, I believe. This is the fairy meteor crush one. Okay, sure. And transmu crayon. If there's another monster on your field, add a light attribute galaxy normal from grab to hand. This turn looks at galaxy I'm attacking. That's fine. Again, recurring out the um, the oblivion or recurring out the, uh, where is it, the Rhinac, right? So, you know, not too shabby there. Now, in terms of rares, anything kind of good here, we've got the um, the meat and greed. Center casting hands to the graveyard. One beast normally you control can attack three attacks on monsters this turn, and if you've got face of meat on your field, all monster you controls lose 500 attack points. Right, so this can potentially become an OTK machine if the field is right. You summon this, you play the spell, talismanic, you make one super weak, then you're kind of guaranteed game with no back row in sight. It could be kind of fun to cock with this. It'd be weird. It's not going to be my first choice, but it'd be kind of fun. But that's going to be my first kind of look at the brand new content coming to Rush Duel tomorrow. Um, again, there's quite a lot of it coming, which is uh, really cool. But also remember that it's too many boxes, not one main box. And in terms of ultra rare cards, right, you're getting less ultra rare cards, A versus 10. You're also spending 2,000 more gems to clear one run of box right so one run of both minis is 2000 more gems and one run of the main box it is going to be an expensive day for rush players but also if there's a speed super mini that's more expensive but also as well potentially there's a rush dual selection box coming there's one in the code but we don't know when it could be coming in a few months time it could be coming tomorrow we don't know but if it happens then it's even more gems going down the drain so uh yeah but anyway it is looking very, very good for Rush Duel. I think the most people are going to go into this box first of all, right? I feel like that the Rush player base will go, oh, look, here's heroes. I can buy heroes. Cool and play with it. That's fine. Cyber Dragon, they've just got structure deck. They can make Cyber Dragon next. And all these decks here, they've already got, right? They've already got cards for them. 
These two being the new ones could be, you know, exciting to play, but I feel like that they'll go for them last, and because of that, because there's two boxes to go through on day one, I feel like this will be our content drop for Rushdoll, in terms of like a meaningful content drop, for a good few months. Right, I, I feel like they're going to want people to kind of go back at these two boxes. Looking forward to tomorrow, of course, there'll be a Yumu, Yuhi, Yudius review, and there'll be a big opening video as well, spending all the gems, hopefully fingers crossed no money, but ugh, it's not going to happen. I'll see you all then. Adios.